for us, I guess, preparation started almost as immediately when the 2017 season finished. Um, we go through player exits, obviously the trade period, we weren't overly active through the trade period. Sam Murray, uh, one of our rookie players last year, um, is at Collingwood and we received a future second round pick for that. Um, then through the draft, we thought we brought in some really exciting young talent in the draft and I'm sure we'll see those players um, in the next couple of years become permanent members of the squad. We had a fair turnover of uh, coaches. We brought in uh, Steve Johnson from the Giants and Geelong as a recently retired player. Dean Cox um, from the West Coast Eagles, obviously a champion player, but also coached there for the last couple of years. Reese Shaw's moved up from the NEFL um, into the senior program and brought in Jeremy Laidler and Ty Keneally, so good change in the coaching department. Um, and then pre-season starts and um, you know we've had a good preparation. Uh, culminates in the JLT series. Um, we felt our form was okay. Um, we got good minutes into our senior players and saw some exciting things from our young players. And uh, it all starts now as we uh, as we head to Perth and take on the Eagles. The AFL have set up a number of mechanisms to equalise the competition on field. We see the draft um, and the salary cap, and now we're starting to see off field um, the introduction of what's called the the soft cap. Um, and basically, what's it? has forced clubs to do is to look at ways to do things better, be more effective and efficient with the money that you've got and what you can spend, um, but still trying to innovate and get ahead of the curve. So um, we're in that transition phase at the moment. Uh, we're a club that's been, we think, progressive over the past couple of decades and we've identified areas where we think we can get better and we um, have addressed that through the draft and uh, obviously there's free agency and trade um, as well. So uh, plenty of things to keep ourselves occupied. I've always said working for the Swans, it's a privilege to, to work here, um, not only to represent um, the South Melbourne Football Club and the Sydney Swans, but also the code. And we've got a great responsibility to continue to champion the code. Um, and the code has challenges, uh, certainly in the eastern suburbs of Sydney, green spaces at a premium. Um, that impacts us directly. Um, we're constantly um, challenged by that, and we, uh, we're certainly looking at um, new training, administration, community facilities, along with training venues, literal grounds, which I think a lot of people wouldn't necessarily appreciate. So um, that's, that's going to be a big ticket item for the next, next couple of years. <coughs> Clearly the development um, of the game, certainly in the youth girls and the women's space, and the introduction of the youth girls academy as part of the QBE Sydney Swans Academy is a really important part. The academy, as I say, is, is clearly important to the development of the game. Um, and as a club, we, we take um, strong stances on things outside of football which we know are important not only to us, to our members and supporters and the Reconciliation Action Plan, the Diversity Action Plan are really important parts of our club and um, we make no apologies about that. We are a football club, we're out there to win um, games of football and hopefully ultimately premierships um, but we also understand that we've got a platform to champion societal causes and we'll continue to do that.